Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and welcome to the point of sale application. In this exclusive training, I'm going to show you how we create an amazing point of sale application. We're going to start from the beginning, from a blank sheet. So every step, every line of code and every field and format, I'm going to show you how you can create an amazing application right before your eyes. So let's get started. <laughs> Alright, thanks so much for joining us today. I've got a really fantastic training for you today, something I've never created, a point of sale application. I'm going to walk you through it. I hope you'll stay. It's going to be a little bit of a training, not tons of code, more formatting. We've got a lot to cover today. I'm really excited about this. Before we get started, I want to make sure you know that you can get this application downloaded using the links in the description below. Absolutely free. In fact, this one's going to be a zip. I'm going to include some pictures for you, maybe some barcode fonts, the application, so you won't want to miss it. Make sure you download it. And also, especially with these live trainings, I tend to make maybe there's a few updates or a few issues with the it live so you always want to download my version and compare your version with my version i always appreciate when you try to program these yourself and i think it's really fantastic so you always want to compare those if you have not subscribed yet please do so using the button down below and make sure you click the notifications bell i create these trainings each and every tuesday absolutely free for you and i love to see what you can create so i always appreciate that if you do like these trainings and you love excel and you want to turn your passion into profits i have just the course for you in fact our excel for freelancers mentorship program is going to teach you just how to do that turn your passion into profits in fact in this program we're going to go from concept to cash and everything in between in weekly videos while i create an amazing accounting application right along with you and i hope you'll create your own applications right along these are weekly subscription based it's an amazing course and i hope you'll jump on the bandwagon tons and tons of students are loving it and learning how to create and sell their own applications all right great glad we got that out of the way and also if you do like these applications and you want over 100 of them i do have a 100 workbook pack so i'll keep that in mind i'll put the links down below if you want to get 100 of them it's just 37 dollars okay thanks great let's get started as you can see i've got a blank sheet here nothing on here i've got sheet number one called pos that's going to be our point of sale application I've got another sheet just with a few item names and these are linked to pictures. I've got some pictures for each of these. It's just simply item ID, item name, item description, price, and an image. This image is linked to a folder and inside that folder I've got some images here. As you can see right here, I've just got some pictures and they're basically they're linked actually on my desktop. I've got a folder of the same pictures on my desktop. I'm going to include these pictures so you can play around with it as well. So you can work. You don't have to create your own pictures. That way you can try out and add features and customize yourself. So I'll include these in this little table so that you have everything you need. All you'll want to do in your own applications is make sure that you update these links with your actual filings, right? These are to mine, so that's not going to help you. These image links. So I want to make sure you get yours. And then, of course, the sheet three is going to be where we're going to put our sales. I want to track all the sales that we've done previously. That's important as we create this. So sheet three is going to handle this. So again, this is going to be our main application where we're going to enter and print receipts, items here, and then sales here. So let's get started. As always, what I like to do is I like to save the first two columns for admin and we hide those columns. So let's color those a little bit differently. And while we go into the home, I'm just going to color those gray. I always want to hide those columns and keep those for admin. So that's a great way to do that. Next up, I want to give it a name. Let's just call it something like point of sale. And uh, that way we'll, we can color the columns, let's say, uh, all the way through O. And then we're going to save some room for receipts. So we're going to format these cells. Give it a fade. So maybe a fill fade. I'll use something a little bit different than I usually do. If you're familiar with these, then it'll just take a minute to watch. Sometimes repetition helps. So even seeing it over and over again helps. And then I'm going to color the one below a little bit less of a fade. And then uh, we'll give that a fill effects of a little bit lighter of a turquoise color. So we'll go to here. And then I want that fading into the background, the main background color. So let's color that. I'm also going to clear out some of those rows. 
with uh, some uh, for the receipt. So not everything's going to be colored because I want the background of the receipt. And the background is let's say K through N. K through N. I want this to be our receipt. So I'm going to actually uh, make that white. And so we'll color that white because I want our receipt to print out and then we can extend this column. So basically the idea is to have our receipt here and our form here and then this column will just be for spaces so that you can extend this off a little bit. So that way your screen's all the same color. So we'll give it a, a font, a larger font and I'll merge and center it maybe to J. And so we have a little bit of a, a larger font and we'll increase the font maybe to about uh, 32 or something like that. It's something nice and big. Oh, that's too much. Okay. All right, that should be good. Let's go with 32. I like that a little bit better. And uh, we can then uh, add some icons in here and add some shapes. What I want to do also is I want to add an item name. Let's say in three item item name. I want to put that in there because that's important. And then I'll put the description down here. And then I want a picture also, so I want to put in that picture. So we also have, um, I also want to know the subtotal of that. So let's put that uh, subtotal here because I want to keep track of it. And then the tax, I want to put that there. Total, I want to keep that. Pay type, I want to know what type they're paying with. And payment, and then change also. I want to keep track of the change as well. Okay, actually I want them all in the same column, so just uh, copy those over and paste them here. I want them all in the same column, and then I'm, I'm going to then uh, have a space for each one of these, so we'll block those out, and then keep that in mind. All right, so that's basically what I want. I want to keep track of that, so all right, I'll put a border around that. I'm going to format those cells and put a border, let's say the same darker turquoise color, and we'll use a border, inside and out border, and I'll use this dotted line for the middle. Okay. So we've got that, we've got a total, and I'll right justify this so that we can see that. And then I want to add colons, I want consistency, so let's add colons on these here. Pay type, and then payment, we want to keep track of the payment, and then we want to keep track of the change. Really, there's only the pay type and the payment are going to be user entered, the rest are going to be calculated, so let's put these in the background as white. Okay, I want that, I'm probably going to put the item description right here. So let's put a box around that, uh, format the cells again. We're going to use the same border here, same color consistency all the way around. And then I'll put a dotted line here horizontally because I want that description to go. Let's put a solid line actually. And I'll put the dotted line here. So we want the item name. I want to give a little bit larger space for that. So I'm going to merge and center it and left justify it. I want the item name here and the item description here. So I'm going to merge and center that too. And uh, let's give it a little bit more space for that and write justify it. Okay, so we've got the item name. We're going to put the calculated information here. And then I also want, the, of course, the price of the information. Let's go put that in the sixth price. We want to show the price. We want to be able to change that price as well. So we're going to put that as white. And I also want the quantity. We also want to change the quantity. Quantity here. So both of these are going to have the same formats. Both of those are going to be editable. Color those white there. And we also want to make sure that they're both right justified. And then in this case, uh, we can keep those, let's say, right justified as well. All right. So we're going to format those cells pretty much using the same borders that we have, the same border colors that we do throughout the application. And we'll use the same border. And then I want the dotted line in the middle vertically. OK, so it's starting to come together now. Let's save our work. And I also want some to scan the item. Of course, we're going to be scanning the item. That is important. So we're going to put that here. Let's just put scan item here because I want to I'll put a little bit larger in case it's a in case it's a larger number and then left justify it. Uh, let's put in a colon. Keep it consistent. See, we like consistent here. And then right justify that and do the same thing here. So let's uh, make this white and uh, again put the same borders around that, formatting the cells with the border. Uh, thanks for your patience on these while I format these, but you seem to really like me to watch me create these. So based on your views, I'm going to try to do a lot more than that. All right, so we have our basic. I'm going to put the picture here. I want that a little small picture here, and I'm going to put a button set here, and then I want to put a button set here as well. The receipt information will go here, and this will be just a little spacer. 
All right, let's add some buttons in here. So I'm going to insert some pictures here and see what we got. I've got some saved already, so I'm just going to insert those. They're going to be bigger, so let's just bring those down to 0.3 or something manageable so that we can see those. And then we'll size them accordingly. Those are the ones that are going to go on the button, so we'll have to bring those to the top. But we have a this is an icon here that I'm going to use for the entire point of sale application. So I'm going to drag this up here, make it a little bit bigger so it's obvious. And then I'm going to add it more of a theme color, which would be this. So get a little bit more theme color. We can also add a little bit of a shadow on that so we can click pictures and just add a little bit of a shadow. So it kind of looks nice. Make this bold and we can also add a little bit darker color onto this. OK, so now it's kind of a nice we get to see that. So we have the item name, but let's add in some buttons here because I want to make sure that we have the button so the user can actually use a touch screen, which is kind of a nice. So we're going to insert shape and we're just going to use a square shape in here. OK, and let's give it a size of try a little bit bigger 0.6 and maybe a width of 0.7. OK, so that's kind of a nice size for that. We have a nice big button there, so that's going to work. And uh, I want to give it something closer to the theme, maybe this. OK, that looks that looks nice. I want to actually give it a font, a larger font. So I want to put it, make this button number one. And then I want to center that, of course, and then we'll duplicate it. But obviously, it's going to be a lot bigger than that. So how big should it be? Probably about, let's see, 32 maybe. Let's click the button and click 32 here. OK, that's given a nice button. There we go. That looks good, nice and big. And then uh, we're ready to duplicate that. Let's duplicate it, Control D. And then I'll, this is going to be for two. And then we can duplicate that again. And we'll click on there, duplicate that. This will be for our number three. Nice. And then we want uh, also, of course, number four. So we'll duplicate that, Control D. Because I want one for each one. And let me just go ahead and do these. I'll pause the video while I create each one. You get the point. So I want to make this a little quicker. OK, now I've created all 12 buttons here. So let's now that I've created all 12 buttons, I'm going to name them. And very important to name them, at least use going to be four letters, at least minimum four letters and a number. So if I were to if I were to add, uh, let's say I wanted to do BUT one, that wouldn't work. Why wouldn't that work? Because that's a cell. So if I hit enter, it's going to go right to a cell. You see that BUT uh, one. So we want to make sure that we have at least four letters. So let's do that. B U T N one button one. Okay, so that's going to work just fine. And I'm going to do the same thing with each of the buttons. There's no need to watch me name each one of them. So I'm going to pause this video and just name them all button button two. So hold on a second while I do that. Okay, I've named all the buttons at least one through nine. This is going to be zero. This is not going to be zero. I want this to be clear. I want to be able to clear button. So let's type that in clear and then we're gonna to have to obviously reduce the font size on this one so let's go ahead and reduce it down to where it'll fit in the cell here let's drop this down here and reduce that down scroll up uh, probably okay that one looks good we can go a little bit higher and then I'm gonna underline it control U all right great so we've got that we've got our basic format buttons there now so let's line them up all we need to do is use our selection here and then i'm going to line them up like this format and then we're going to align to the top and then i'm going to probably bring them a little bit closer in I'll, i've got a lot of, to cover here so i want to bring them closer in here and then also importantly we're going to group everything together once we're set up so there we go that's look a little bit tighter here so we can I want I've got a lot of space I want to add buttons here too so we're gonna keep that a little bit closer together okay good so now we've got everything nice and close together and I'm gonna line the rest of these up and there's no need for you to watch me do that because it's kind of boring so I'll hold on a second I'll pause it while I line everything up nicely and then we'll create some more buttons all right now that I've got everything lined up I want to I've got a few more things you don't want to name this button obviously clear I'm gonna this one's gonna be different it's gonna have a different purpose clear button and I also want to add this one it's gonna be a little bit different it's gonna be called decimal button it's going to have a little bit different macro 
All right, okay, excellent. We've got a few more buttons to create. I wanna create some different payment types. So let's do that. Let's create some buttons. I'm gonna just duplicate one of these buttons using Control D and I'm gonna shrink this down the width because I wanna fit more in here. Okay, maybe uh, 0.5 because I wanna put three buttons in here the same size and uh, there's gonna be no text on this. But what I'm gonna do is I wanna put a payment type in here. So I'm gonna, I want actually three payment types. So I'm gonna duplicate this three times total of three buttons and move them over here because I want all three payment types and then uh, all right we can line those up and distribute them just by selecting them control and then formatting make sure we align the top here and then we want to distribute them horizontally that looks nice all right and uh, then I also want to make sure the bottoms are the same as these I want to make sure those are all consistent so let's line up the bottoms or the tops either one would be fine Okay, so we've got those. Now let's add some payment types in. The first one I'm gonna do is cash. So I'm gonna put that icon right here. Oh, let's bring all let's bring all those to the top first. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select on all of them because we created the buttons after. Bring forward, bring to the front. Okay, so now they'll be on top of the buttons, which is kind of handy. So cash, we have cash. We have a credit card here. I wanna bring the credit card as a payment option and then the check option also. So we've got those three options here. We can line those up nicely so that the, everything's grouped properly. Format and align the middle right here. Okay, so everything's lined up nicely and distributed. Align, I also wanna distribute them horizontally so everything's centered. And we can group those very soon, but I wanna create a payment button also on this. So let's also duplicate this one. I want a payment button and that payment button is going to be larger, but I want the same height as this. So let's align the top. This is going to. This is how you create very buttons quick, really quickly and easily. Okay, and what do we want to give the name? I want to call this payment, but we're going to have to reduce the font. So payment, and then we're going to reduce the font so that it fits. And I want it right justified because I'm going to add an icon onto that. So let's click the button itself and then lower the font here. And then I want to increase the font. Obviously, it's going to be a larger button. And I'll give this a width maybe around oh, one point. That should be fine width. That should be okay as it is. And then we'll move that over here. And then I'll align the left here because I want to make sure everything's lined up. Align left. And then click on here. And then we're going to align the right to this button. That way everything lines up. Then I'm going to create three more, three more buttons, two more buttons aligned to the right. Okay, good. So now we've got everything centered and uh, let's uh, add in an icon for this so we can put in an icon there. Can probably increase this font. We created that button after. So let's again move to the top, bring to the front. All right, so let's, uh, that looks like a good. I'm gonna create two more buttons, Control D. And then I wanna bring these two also because we're gonna add icons. I wanna bring those to the front as well. All right, and uh, this one I'm gonna be next. N-E-X-T, because I want to go to the next record. So we'll use that, and I also want to print record. We'll increase the font here just temporarily. Bring this all the way down here, and then I want this to be our print button. So we'll capitalize, and then we're going to increase the fonts on both of these buttons. So holding down the shift, I want to increase those just pretty much larger. That's pretty good, something nice and large. Okay. Good, now we're getting set, we got our buttons set, and uh, what we wanna do is we wanna group these, start grouping these items. So I'm gonna hold down the control and group those. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. And I'm gonna group those. This is our shortcut for grouping. And I'm gonna move this one a little bit to the left and group that, because I want those always grouped. I also wanna group these button sets. So I'm gonna do my selection tool and I'm gonna highlight everything because I don't want it. And I'm gonna group it. And importantly, right after we group it, we want to Go to the properties and we want to make sure that we don't size it. We just spent a lot of time making sure everything's set up, but we want to click move, but don't size with cells. In fact, that's going to go through all of our buttons once we get set, because when we change these columns, I don't want these button sets to move. But I want to make sure that everything is set up right. So we're going to bring down and make sure those bottoms are lined up, align the bottom. Okay, that looks pretty good. And uh, we can bring the font. So now we've got our next button. We can group that. And uh, we've got our print button here. We we'll also want to line that up. Okay, good. Uh, we can bring this up a little bit more. Looking good. Now we've got our POS coming together very, very well. I'm going to group all of the buttons, line them up in the middle so everything looks great. And uh, group that and make sure we also group this one, line them up. Everything's going to get lined up. 
and then group it. And make sure, of course, after we group everything, everything's now grouped, we also want to make sure that we are moving but not sizing. That's very, very important. So we're going to go to properties, move but don't size. Okay, so we've got this named and set up. Our point of sale is coming together. We're going to put our receipt information here and uh, looking very good. We can align those. All right, let's get into the naming right now so we can name everything properly. So let's put this as the next button, N-E-X-T -E button. And this will be our print button. Everything should be pretty clear. Make sure you always name it so you know it. That way you can see it on the shapes, print button. And there's specific, these are gonna have specific names and I'm gonna show you why because it's gonna be a lot easier to create macros. I can use the same macro for each one if I use specific names. Not necessarily the group, but the individual shapes. So let's take a look at this. I'm gonna name this, let's go into the selection pane. It's much easier to work from there. And you see the selection pane, what I'm gonna call this is just cash. And I'm also gonna assign the same name. Generally we don't, but in this case it's gonna be very specific cash. I'm gonna assign the same name to that. And also I'm going to do the same thing with credit card. I'm just going to call this card and I'm going to call this card. Now we're going to use the same name because we're going to turn this name automatically into the payment type. And we're going to do the same thing for check. Check just so both the picture, the icon and the button are going to have the same name. OK, great. So we've got payment. We've got this. Everything's perfect. And uh, let's name the payment button and then we're done. Then we can start writing some code. But and I also want to payment button okay so we got everything named we're gonna put our picture here we're gonna put our subtotal here we're gonna put our receipt let's start working on this receipt I want this gonna be merge and center and I'll call this sales receipt and then let's make that a little bit bold and bigger of course that would be good and then I'm gonna put down a also want to merge and center this and the next few lines as well because we're going to put in some information there that we want merge and center those and i want to put uh probably the, the name of the store let's call it fredder's groceries my favorite name groceries and i also want to put the address one two three four five main street morning usa and then probably a phone number here All right, so next up, I also want to know the receipt number here. So I want to put that in here. Receipt number is very important because we're going to keep track of that. And then the next up, I want to know the date, also the date of the receipt and the cashier. And we'll just put in Frida Fredders. That's Fred's sister. Frida Fretters. Okay, and then the date. I want to use a long date here. I also want to merge and center these, holding down the control. Merge and center. Merge and center. And then left justify it. And then these are going to be right justified. So we can see our receipt come to life here. Great. So what's next? Well, I'm going to skip a line and then we want to put the information. So here I want the item. Here the quantity. The price. And the total. Right, and I want to center those and then put a dotted line above that and below it. So we're going to format those cells, format, and then I'll put like a dotted line, something like this, above and below it. So it gets a, kind of a, the look of a receipt. That looks nice. And then our items will go here. So Apple here would go here, the quantity one, and then the price would be, let's just say, $2.99. And then the total will be probably equal to this times this. So just to get an idea of, of where we're going there and that. Okay, so let's focus on the formatting now. I want to format this entire one probably as a number because we want to use generally, it could be 1.5, and these are going to be price columns. So let's just format all those down there as a currency or format price. Okay, and this one looks good the way it is. I like, I like the way it's looking now. And uh, so all of our items are going to go here and then I'm going to want probably things like subtotal and total down here. So I would want to put something like at least temporarily like total here, tax here, total would be here, paid amount. I want to know the amount they paid and the change. So those are all important. I want to know all of those 
that information is going to be below the sheet. Now it's going to be dynamic, right? So we're going to put this in dynamically because we don't know when it's going to end. We don't know how many rows. So that would look good. I want that there. And then I also want something like thank you for your receipt. But it's going to be dynamic. So I want to say something like thank you, come again, and then a barcode here. Let's put those in using text because I want them centered around there. So I'm going to sh click shape and insert and insert a text box here. I'm going to make it about the same size as the width of this receipt. And then I want to put in a message, so something like, thank you, come again. Something like a message, and then we'll center that. No borders, I don't want any borders around that. So I just wanted it, no outline on that. So we'll just click no outline. Make that bold so we can see what it would look like. And uh, Okay, good, I like that. And I also want a barcode font here, and it's gonna be based on this receipt number. So if I enter receipt number 1000, I want a barcode based on that. So let's enter another text box. In fact, let's just duplicate this one using Control D, but I'm gonna change the font. In this one, it's gonna be equal to whatever is going to be that receipt number here. So equal that receipt number. So that's what I want, good. But now I wanna change the font. I want a barcode font on that. Let's try code 128. Obviously, that's too small. So let's increase it a considerable amount and then increase this. All right, I like the way that looks there. Okay, so we have thank you and we have a nice barcode font here. That's a good footer message. Let's put that lower here and then we can raise it up a little bit. Nice, so we've got those two and let's make them on top of each other. And we're gonna center those, format a line and I'm gonna put line in the middle and I'm gonna group those. Because I'm going to use those basically, but they're going to be displayed dynamically because we don't know how big this receipt's going to be. So let's group them. And always when we group, format the cells, right? Format the shape in this case and go to properties and move but don't size. We don't want that moving. We want that say we may we may size it accordingly a little bit, anyways, accordingly, just to make sure. And I'm going to give this a specific name, calling it footer group. Okay, so now we've got a footer group, and now we got this is gonna be dynamic, of course, and I want to put some conditional formatting in here as well. All right, so our receipt's starting to come together. I like the way it looks so far. We've got a lot more work to do. What do we want? We wanna focus on some information based on the items, what items we've selected. I also wanna know when I select an item, I wanna know what I've selected. So let's add in some additional information here. I wanna know when the item's gonna load. What I want to do is I wanna select an item and I want that item information to appear here. I want the item name, the item description, the price, and the quantity to appear here when we select it. When we enter a scan an item, I want the number that we enter to, to automatically enter here and then automatically add it down here. Keep adding and adding and adding. So, But I want to be able to edit existing items as well. So we need to know when the item is loading, meaning the information is coming from here and going into here. So that's important as well. I also want to keep track of the totals here. So we need to do that. So I want the item load. I also want the item row. I need to know what row the item, and that's based on the row here in the database. I also want to know the receipt row, receipt row. That's the row that we've selected here. And I also, one more thing, I want to know the next receipt number, next receipt team number. I don't want to know that because that's important. I want to understand which is the next one so we can load up so they're all unique, the numbers. And then we'll highlight those, give those a distinct look and feel so that we can see the difference. Okay, good. So we're, we're set with that. That's all we're going to need as far as that. And uh, let's go ahead and name some information, create some named ranges now. For the items, I want to create a dynamic named range for the item ID because we're going to need to locate that. So that's very important. So let's go into the formulas name manager and create a new actually let's uh, highlight this let's make sure we include the header name manager and then new what I want to do is create an item ID but it's going to be dynamic so we're going to have to add offset in here let's copy this we're going to use it in a moment and then what we're going to do is I'm going to type in offset and I want to include the header but only because if there's no data I want to make sure that it doesn't create an error so we're going to include a2 but then we're going to move one column down and then comma comma count a I want to know all the text in that in that whole column of course I want to increase it more than 12 so we're going to go let's say 9999 just in case we have a lot of data and of course since we're counting the header we need to subtract one minus one 
comma one, which means one column. Let's tab out and tab back in to make sure that the dancing ants cover our data, which it does, it's perfect. So I'm gonna copy that entire named range using Control C and I'm gonna click OK. I also want another one for item name. So let's click new and click item name. I want a named range there. And then I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it. Now all I need to do is change the column. So I can change A from A to B and then we're set. So I'm gonna put this B just in three different places, B and then B. Again, tab out, tab back in, make sure that it's covered. Okay, we're good to go. And I want one more, new item description. We're gonna follow the same procedure. In fact, we're just gonna paste it in there and change A to C. That's gonna quickly be able to create three different named ranges using offset. Tab out, tab in, make sure that it covers our data and click OK. All right, now I've quickly created three different. I also want to create a named range for our receipt numbers and our sales. Our sales page is going to have, let's just call it sales history, whatever we want, that's fine. And inside that sales history, I'm going to put some information. I want to know the receipt number. So that's important. I also want to know the date that, they, that the receipt was made, the cashier who rung it up. And then of course the item, the quantity, price, and the total. So I'm gonna want all that information here. It's gonna be just a basic table. So we're gonna uh, merge and send to that here. And then let's just give it a basic color. It's not so important, the formatting of this one. Okay, so, but what do I want? I wanna know all the receipt numbers. So I wanna make sure that I can have a dynamic name range for the receipt number. So let's do that. Let's create one more dynamic name range, formulas, name manager, new, and we'll just call this receipt number. And of course, this is gonna also use the offset. So again, we're gonna say offset using the sales, A2 through A, and obviously you're gonna much larger number. So we're gonna copy that, back that up, comma one means one column we don't want to start at the header comma comma count a i want to count all of them again paste it in but increase the, make it a larger in case we have a lot and then again minus one because we need to exclude the header we're only including the header so there's no error when there's no data comma one and then close parentheses tab out tab back in make sure that it covers good so it does all right so We've got, we've got our named ranges now covered. So now we can add in a little bit of a formula so we understand. We see our item numbers 1001, 1002. Okay, good. Let's focus on some of these. I want to know the next receipt number. So how do we find that? Well, we just created a next receipt. Let's see if we have any sales. We have one and two, but ours is going to be probably like 100. So let's put in some larger ones. I want Because I want a big barcode font, so I'm going to 100. And then let's just say 1001. So our next, I want to know what the next one would be. So we can do that using if error and max equals if error. If an error, because if it's an error, if there's no data, we also need to set an initial receipt number. So we're going to include the max and the max is of the receipt number. What is the maximum of that? Plus one. That's going to be our next increment plus one. But what if there's no data? If there's, an, if there's no data at all, I want to start it off. At, let's just say 1000. Okay, let's take a look. Perfect, 1002. Now, as soon as I delete the data, as soon as I delete these two, it's gonna get, it should go to 1000. So let's go back and check. Perfect, that's what I want, 1000, 1000 here. So we know our next receipt number. I wanna know the selected row. If the user makes a selection change, I wanna know the row and I wanna highlight that row and I wanna make sure there's data. So for example, if they click row 10, I wanna highlight that. I wanna know which row the user has selected. So we can add in some conditional formatting. Let's click on the first one and then go way down here just to there. And then what I'm gonna do is add some conditional formatting. So go back into the home, conditional formatting, manage rules. I wanna create a brand new rule and use a formula. What is that formula gonna be based on? It's based on, of course, B10. So it's gonna be equals B6 equals row open and close parentheses now i want to give that a specific format based on our theme so let's go into the fill fill effects and i'm going to choose this darker color here but i want to make sure to give it a font so i want a contrasting so i'm going to make it bold and make it white it's going to give it a contrasting so that we know what they've selected apply that 
make sure the form applies to, click OK. All right, so when they click here, I want that to be highlighted. And I also want to load the information. That's what's going to happen here. And I want the item name here to appear here. And I want the item description to appear here. All right, so we got the item name. How do we know? I want to know the item based. I want to know the item row based on the scanned item information. So if they enter 1001, which of course is our first item, Apple, I want to make sure. And that starts on, of course, I want to know row three. When they enter 1001, I want to know it's row three. We have named ranges, but they start at row three. So we're going to need to add two. Let me show you what that is. So equals if error I always want to if error because I don't want to make sure we're going to match what are we matching I'm going to match look up this value 1001 and I'm going to match it based on the item ID and I want an exact match so that's going to be zero and in case there's an error I just want empty to show up but I don't want one right one's going to show us our first row I really want the row so we always have to add two because I want to know the row not that it's the first item so adding two is going to do that. So now we get three for 1001. And if we change this to 1002, we are going to get four, which is exactly what I want. All right, so we've got that. And this is going to be a true or false here because we all want to know when the item loads. So now we've got in. That's all we need for that. I want to know the item description. We can use that based, of course, on this name. So we can use an index for that equals index. What are we indexing? I'm going to index the item description, which we have here. What are we going to base it on? Base it on the row. We know the row is going to be here. We can also base it on the name, the match. Let's match the name so that way, no matter what we select, we can know match. We're going to look up the name and we're going to base it on the item name here. Item name. And then we want an exact match. So that's going to get us the, the row. In this case, we don't have to add because we're indexing the same item column. Comma one is the column. And let's just take a look at that. OK, Granny Smith apples. Now that creates perfect. It looks just right. That's just the way I want it. We've got apple. And if we change this to straw berry the hand picks from okay great so we've got the description for strawberries and based on the name that's what I want why do I want that because whether they enter this or whether they select it I want the description to show up here perfect and the price is going to be dynamic based on whether they enter here from the database or based on whether they select here the price so there's gonna be two different prices the price if they enter here the price is going to come from right here but if they select on an existing item, the price is going to come from here, and that VBA will handle that. Let's focus on the subtotal now because we want to make sure we get the totals right and the taxes all right. So that's going to be helpful. And the subtotal is basically going to be a formula based on all of the, what's in this column. But I can't just total what's in this column because I also have the subtotal of tax. So I have to use a sum if, and it's going to have to be based on something. Sum if there's a value in column K, then we can sum it. So let's use sum if for that. Equals sum if, and what is it? We're going to sum if, and it's going to be based on this. Sum if K, and we'll use a large number. I want to make sure that that contains a value before we sum. So what is that sum? Then we're going to use quotes does not equal quote so that's going to mean as long as it's not blank what that means and what's the sum range i'm going to sum this right here okay great so i'm going to add again that to a large number 999 because in case we have a lot of numbers so perfect so that means if i add figure here and i add a some kind of a description here again apple it's going to add in but if i add something here it's not going to add in right because there's nothing here so that's exactly what I want, adding only the numbers if they're values, if there's a value in column K. Perfect. And the tax is going to be equal to, let's just say this times 0.10, let's say 10% tax. And then we can also format these. Let's format these, this and this, actually not the payment, but that's okay. Uh, format this. Okay. And the payment's going to have to be tax because we're going to be using that based on a entry so I'll show you what reason for that is in a moment okay so we got pay type that's going to be based on this total is going to be equals the sum obviously of the subtotal and the tax perfect okay great so we've got that all right that looks good that's just the way I want it however this information is going to be dynamic right I don't want it to be here it could be here it could be here we don't know where this information is going to be dynamic based on the last row so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that I'm going to place it somewhere other than really where I want and then we'll use VBA to place it back in so I'm going to place it right here 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, based on the total number of items, I'm going to place it dynamically in the row below. This is also going to be placed dynamically too. So we can place it here. So here, basically, what all I need to do is say equals the subtotal, equals the total tax, and then equals, right, the total. And then we're just going to paste the values as there. And the paid amount, again, again, equals also. In fact, this one I'm going to do through VBA, but I'll show you that in a minute. And then equals the change. Okay, great. Then all I need to do is copy and paste this based on the last row. All right. So what's next? So next up, what I want to do is I want to start with the VBA. We're almost ready. Everything's looking really good. We have our screen all the way updated. I really appreciate your patience on this. I'll put the picture in here dynamically. Let's get into the VBA and start adding information here so we can get this working and get you a POS that's going to work. All right, into the VBA, developers, Visual Basic. As you know, there's no code. Let's add a module here. So we're going to insert a module and we'll just call this POS macros using the properties. And we'll just call it PO, POS macros. Any name will do. And the first thing what I really want to do is I want a user makes a change to E10. I want to add the information all in here. And I want to add it in the first available line here. So I want to add it in, make it really easy. So let's create a macro and call this add item. So we can get rid of this and we'll go sub add item. All right, and I also want to know the item row. That's really important. So we're going to dimension the item row as long. And I also need to know the available row, which is the first available row. So available row as long as well. Okay, so the first thing I want to make sure is that B5 contains a value, right? We cannot add an item if we don't know the item row. That's really important, right? We can't add the details. I can't add the price, the quantity, and the name if I don't know the row. So if this is a bad information, if it's 455 right, there's no item, this is going to be blank. So we need to make sure that item contains an actual row. So let's go ahead and make sure that we put in a check in VBA. That's the first thing we want to do. We can reduce this a little bit so we can see both screens while we have them up. Okay, so first thing with sheet one, that's what we're focused on. If dot range B5 equals empty, then exit sub, right? Nothing we can do sub. Okay, so nothing we can do if uh, there's it's empty. So we can, remember, next up, in case there's any uh, picture here, any previous picture, I wanna make sure to delete that. So we need to write some code so we can delete any picture as we're loading new items. If that picture doesn't exist, it's gonna create an error. So we wanna wrap it in on air, resume. Next, dot shapes, item, pick, dot delete right we want to delete that and then on air so i use auto hotkey to automatically type it's a free software auto hotkey that's what you'll see me typing really fast it's automated okay so next up we're ready to set the item row we know the item row that's in b5 don't we right so we can copy this just write equals b5 item row next up i need to know the available row where are we going to put it i need to know the first available row in this case it's going to be 12 so we can do that using k and xlf plus one so we can write that in the code so the available row is equal to dot range and then we'll just use k let's say 999 dot n xlf dot row that's going to give us our first available row okay good so now that we have our first available row we we can set the receipt row i need to know the receipt row what is the row in b6 i want to put that in b6 i want to know what row remember we added conditional formatting for that right so if this changes to 11 i want to know what row that we just added so we keep that in mind i want to know the row and put that in b6 so dot range b6 dot value equals what does it equal it equals of course the that variable we just said sheet to d and the item price available row set receipt row great so what do i need to know next next up i need to know i want to put in the item price and the item name so let's start with the item name dot range e3 i want to add in e3 
e3 is right here i want to put in the item name right here that's going to automate the description because it's based on the farmer so first thing we're going to do is put in the name based on where it is what is it it's going to be whatever is in b and the item row so that's pretty easy so let's add that in right now so dot range e let's put that correctly e3 dot value equals right sheet two is where our items are located sheet two range b and the item row and the item row dot value okay that's the item name but i also want to add in the item price so the item price is going to go in f6 f6 let's take a look at that right here i want to put that right there so that's where the item row is going to be taken care of so we can add that in right now dot range f6 what is that going to be equal to it's going to be equal to almost the same but of course a different row equals sheet two and of course this is going to be d the d price is located in column d descriptions located in c item price but we don't need the, the descriptions automated through our uh, formula so we don't need to add that in that's automated i also want to default the item quantity to one i want to default the quantity to one so we can set that up dot range in this case it would be f8 f8 equals one setting the default you can set yours to anything but i think one will be fine default item quantity to one all right so now we've got our default item quantity now we're ready to add let's just put an add item detail to the receipt detail to receipt okay great so we're ready to add so basically what do i want to do i want to add the name the quantity the price and the total through a formula i'm going to put in a formula here so we can do that with the following lines of code dot range k of course that's going to be the item name k and what k and the and the available row and the available row dot value equals what is it going to be equal e3 dot range e3 because we've already added the name in e3 because that's going to be our item name good to comment everything out what's next we can copy and paste this to make it a little bit quicker here next up is the quantity right so that's located in l that's column l we need the equals here and we need the equals here okay so we've got the equals and what where is our quantity located that is located in f8 so we're going to change this to f8 and then put in item quantity okay so good so now we have that what are we what else do we want i want the item price we've got to have the price in there so that's going to be in m so we can copy that and change this to m m is going to be where our price is located and it's coming from f6 right our price is f6 which is right here we want our price f6 and it's going to go right here in column m so we can do that so we're going to call that item price next up what do we want well now i want the uh, actual formula and that's going to be located in column n n is going to be where our formula is so we're going to paste that in change this right we're going to actually going to be quotes e quotes equals l and quotes and the available row another and sign and then quote, and then I want to use the times because it's multiple times, which is the asterisk. And again, and in this case, it's going to be M, right? We want to know the price and M. In fact, we can complete those together. M and the available row. Okay, so we have L times M, right? L, the available row times N. Again, let's just do that here l in the available row times m in the available row perfect that's exactly the formula that i want to enter so we have that there all right now that we have the formula let's just put in total price formula all right so what's the next step next step i want to check to add the pictures right we want to add some pictures in there once we select on it i want that picture to show up 
as soon as I select it, I want to show the picture that's whatever that picture is based on this image here. We've got the image here, so I'd like to have a nice picture show up. So how do we do that? Let's write just a little bit more code. First of all, we want to make sure that actually there we don't have any issues with the file name. In case it's not found, I just don't want to load the picture. I don't want it to create an error. So we just have to run a check. Let's just use on error resume next, but I'm going to add, I'm going to comment that out in case there's an error. On error resume next. But we're commenting it out we're going to add it in later so just in case because it's not good in case there's an error i need to know i know that these are correct so i don't want any errors to show up but if there are if i make a mistake in the code i want i want the error to show up now so keep that in mind if directory we want to check for that file path what is the file path sheet two right dot range what is the range it's going to be e and what e and the item row and the item row that is the file path of the picture dot value vb directory does not equal empty then right if it's not empty it means the file has been found then we can continue so good so we have that and if so now we can add the rest of the code in if there's a correct picture so what is that well first of all with right we're focused on the sheet with dot pictures pictures dot insert what are we inserting of course we're inserting this right here this file name right here I'm gonna insert this that's what I want to insert so let's copy that paste that in there not the comma and so then I what I want to do is once it's insert that will insert it so what I want to I want to focus on that with dot shape range because of that shape range I want to do a few things with it what do I want to do well the first thing I want to lock the aspect ratio lock aspect ratio equals MSO true right? I want to lock I want to make sure that that aspect ratio is locked I want to set a height for that and it equals let's just say around 45 maybe something small like that 45 and then give it a name I want a specific name name equals item pick because that way it's always the same name we can easily delete it and then end with and then end with perfect so that's the way we have it so now we we have our shape we've set the information but now I want to work with it what do I want to do with dot shapes I want to this which shape the one we just added item pick with that I want to do something with it I want to place it in a specific cell and I want to and I want to make it visible so dot left what do I want to place it equals sheet one why we need sheet one now? Because we're on with dot with shape. So we need to specify sheet one range. Where do I want to place it? I want to place it. Let's take a look at where we want to place that back in here. And we want to place it right about D6. So let's put that D6 inside the code. Range D6 dot left. And then the same thing with dot top. Top, of course, is also going to be D6, but dot top. So let's copy that paste it down here and put top and I want to make it visible dot visible equals MSO true okay that looks good so now we've got end with there and now we want the end if so let's right remember this is the end if that's based on this is a directory it's a clear link so we have that perfect and I also want to do a few more things let's go on error zero right in case there's that way, if there was an issue with the link, and let's comment that out for now, but we'll add that back in a little bit later on, just in case there's an error with the picture. So also what I want to do is I want to clear the item ID. I want to get ready. Once they've entered an item, I want to clear this out. I want to get ready for the next item, and I want to put it in. That way they can just scan the item in, and it's automatically ready for the next item. So let's do that. Let's clear it out. Dot range E. 10 through f10 remember it's a merge cell so we need to clear out both of the cells or all of the cells in that dot clear contents and then clear let's put in a note clear item id and i want to make sure it's ready for the next one so let's select that dot range e10 remember we only need one cell in a merge cell there remember we only need one cell in a merge cell when we're selecting it so I want to just select that and get it ready for the next user all right so we're done with that let's run this code and see if we have any issues let's make sure we have a specific ID and let's run this code save it before we run code in case we make a catastrophic mistake then we can always just close it out so we're gonna run this 
and oh it looks nice let's take a look at this apple perfect it put in the price it's got the price and the quantity and it's cleared it out and it put the picture in just as we wanted okay great so now we've added the item in and let's just put in now what I want to do is I want to make this run automatically when the user makes a change to e10 so let's add in that code right now so when the user makes a change we want it that's gonna be a change event based on our POS sheet and it's gonna be a worksheet change so worksheet not selection change but change we'll add some code in selection change shortly so I want that change to happen when we make a selection well, what kind of selection do we want I want to write on on change of item if the row is found if the row is found and add item to found and add to receipt so what do we do so if not intersection which one e10 e10 if the user makes a change to e10 and I want to make sure e10 is not empty and range e10 I want to make sure that in case they clear it out that kind of change I don't want dot value does not equal empty then what then I want to run the macro add item if if you're not sure what the macro name is use it in all lowercase and as soon as it changed to uppercase you, we know that it's the right watch did it change let's uh, bring this out a little bit so you see how it changed let me show you that again I put it in all lowercase add item but I'm not sure if I got the item name right so as soon as I hit enter it moves to all caps and that means you know you've got the macro right so add item so that means as soon as we change it, it's gonna add an item so let's clear that out now let's give it a try so as soon as I add an item one zero zero two it should work perfect banana okay great but you know what I messed up one thing notice how I replaced the line I wanted uh, the available row must be plus one so let's go back there go back to POS and because I replaced the same row so look at our available row here available row not the last row the first available row plus one that's important okay we got that fixed up now one zero zero one add in an apple one zero zero two perfect so it seems how it's selecting and now what I want to do is I want I select a specific item I want a few things to happen I want to make sure that that information loads up here when I select it so let's get that that's on selection change so why don't we add that code in right now and that's gonna be called load item so our add item code is working just good just the way I want it and let's um, continue on with another macro called load item and when do we want that to happen when we make a selection of a specific receipt I want to load that item up because this one's working just fine now so how are we gonna do that well that's based on the selection change so let's go back into the, the worksheet here the worksheet code and focus on our selection change so what are we gonna do let's uh, write some let's write a comment here on selection of receipt item load item details if not what are we going to focus on k through n right k through n that's our receipt so let's look at that k and our first row is k10 through n let's just large, large number 999 i also want to make sure that k actually contains a value otherwise we can't load anything and range k and the target row target row dot value does not equal empty in that case I want to load then then do something what do I want to do then I want to load all the information in so the first thing I want to do in b6 I want to put the row remember our row must go in b6 that's that highlighted row right here so I want to put that in b6 so let's do that that's the first thing we'll do range remember we don't need dot range because we're on the sheet itself range b6 dot value equals target row that's the selected row okay so we've got that next up now that we have that we're going to set the item load to true I want to make sure that we're loading the, know we're loading the item so that's going to come in handy a little bit later so range b4 dot 4 dot value equals true and then just gonna set that back to false but we're gonna do a few things in the meantime so let's do that now it's easy to just copy and paste it equals false and then we'll add some code right in between there so the first thing we want to do is I want e3 to be the item name so range e3 dot value 
equals, what is it? K and the target row. Range K and the target dot row dot value. That's going to be the item name. Okay, so what else? Let's just copy and paste this because we want to add some other details. It's a little bit easier. So I'm going to add in next, I want to add in the item quantity. And next, I want the item price. So we want all that information. Now the quantity is going to go into F8. Quantities are F8, so let's check that. F8. Okay, and then our price, our quantity is going to go in F8, and our price is going to go in F6. We can format that cell there as a price. Okay, so we want that. Let's put that back in now. F8, and then F6 is where our item price is going to go. F6. Good. So we got item price in F6, quantity in F8. All right. So what else do we need to do? I want to set. Now we have B4. I think that's it. So let's take a look. Let's condense that a little bit so we're good to go and we can now select on it K okay, we're going to change this here we need to know K L and M L and then M is a price of course we don't need the total so now when we select something nice let's check let's change a quantity here just for the fun of it to make sure that that gets loaded up Hey, I wanted to jump back in here. I've actually already recorded the video, but there's one thing I wanted to add. I just want to show you when I select an item, I want that picture to show up as well. So not only when we enter an item from here, but also when we select it. So I added some code in after the effect. Uh, so I just wanted to let you know what that is all about. So also on selection change, what we did is we set an item. I set, this is a brand new, and of course you can download this, set the item range and found item range. We set those two items. And then what I did is I set the item range to the item name on sheet two. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for the found item, looking for the found item. We're gonna look for the item name, which is in K, looking for that. If it's found, if not found is nothing that means if it's found then we can define the item row as found item row then we can define the found item row and then the rest is the same just as we added the picture before no different also in d6 so we already went over that training i just wanted to jump back in this video so you can see now we have the ability to change the picture on selection i wanted to add that in because i thought that was really important okay great okay so our quantity goes to two we can make this a number actually because it's going to be sometimes 2.5 whatever all right so let's save what we have so far looking good our, our receipts coming together it's coming together really really nice I also want to add some additional formatting for total I want this to be different so let's highlight all of these cells here we can go all the way down to something a large number and I want the total to look different so when we add conditional formatting and manage rules I'm gonna add a brand new rule and what I'm gonna use a formula and what's that formula it's going to be based on column M right so M if it's gonna be based that's where our total is gonna to be located so M but I it's gonna be for every single row in that field so I want to make sure to get rid of the dollar sign before the 10 equals what's it gonna equal total and then the colon so when that equals total and the colon what do I want I want to bold the whole line and maybe put maybe borders around it so font I want bold and then border I want to add some borders to that so let's put a solid border above and below that and that'll make the column stand out click OK and apply and we see since it applies to K10 now our totals automatically going to have that if I change the total row it's going to automatically change too then it's as soon as we remove that total it's going to be gone so great that works good so because I want that to be dynamic so that our totals automatically all right so continuing on what else do we have to do we have to have some more code in now so what I want is if I change if I've selected an item and I change the price here to like two I want that price to be reflected here or if I change the quantity here I want that quantity to be reflected in the receipt it gives users the ability to actually change the quantity in a receipt so how do we do that well that's based on a change that we make a change to f6 or f8 so let's write some code that we can make those changes and that's on change event not selection change but actually change event so we're going to scroll up here and write some additional code on change of price or quantity for the added items right for added items so we can write some if not if not intersection what are we going to change f8 or f6 right those are the both f8 or f6 
then we want to do something. We want to make sure B4 is not false. We want to make sure that the change that we're making is a manual change, not when the item is loaded. And that happens when B4 is false. And range B4 dot value equals false. And I also want to make sure that B6 contains a value. There has to be a receipt row. And range B6, if we're going to update the receipt row, we need to know what row it is. 6 dot value does not equal empty. So those three conditions have to be true. Then I want to do something. Then what? Then I want to dimension the receipt row as long. Dimension the receipt row as long because we're going to be using that. And I want to set it up. RECPT row equals B6 equals range B6. Okay, so we're going to set the receipt row because we need to know what row to update, of course. If we don't have the row, we can't. Receipt row. Once we have the receipt row, we can check which did change did the user make. Was it F6 or was it F8? If not, intersection. Let's increase this so you can see that. Bring this a little bit up, bring this a little bit over. If the user made a change to F6, then what do we want to do? Then M, right? Range M, of course, that is our price, right? That's our price. In that case, I want to update M. Receipt row dot value equals the target value. Update price. All right, next up, we can actually copy this and use it for the quantity, except we just make a few small changes. Update QTY. So if the user's F8, if they've made a change to F8, then we're going to update the quantity. So F8, M, in fact, in this course, the quantity is located in column L. L, and we're going to update the quantity. Let's take a look at that now and see if that worked OK. So we're going to update this quantity to 3 and it updated to three. And now if I want to change the price to two, it updates to two. So now you see automatically the price quantity updated. If I want to change the price to five, it automatically works perfectly. All right, because it's kind of expensive bananas, so we don't want to do that. All right, so we've got that perfect. So now that's working good. Now let's make these buttons work. What I want to do is I want to actually add in and select, when I use selects these buttons, I want to add in specific, I want to put them in here so that they can actually, instead of scanning the items, then maybe they want to enter the buttons using these for a touch screen. So how do we do that? Well, it's actually very easy. I can use one macro for most of these buttons. So let's write that macro now back into the VBA and let's go into the POS here and let's go down here and add in another macro here and we'll call that macro sub enter number button and so what we can do is we can since we've named the buttons very specific it's very very easy so with sheet one active cell value active cell value why are we doing active cell because we may use this for the quantity or we may use this for the number so we can use this for different cells equals active cell dot value and now what do i want what i, I really want is this i want to use the same macro for buttons but how do i do that well the name of this is button one the name of this is button two the name of this is button three and four so I've given these each one a name so the fifth character is the number so how do I do that well we can use application caller it's a really really great field let me just show you something let's just comment this out I want to show you something using application caller it's kind of a cool trick so let's just comment this out I want to show message box application dot caller and basically what that is is that is the shape that's actually calling it so if I take this macro and assign it to a specific button let me show you what happens in fact we can assign it to the group but I'm gonna actually have to change the macro velocity right click assign macro and that's gonna assign this macro enter number button click OK now watch when I click that button one you see how it tells button one if I click here button two so button three so okay so we now now of course it's not for clear in the period we're not going to be able we're going to use some different macros for those two but it works for one through nine one through zero so great so we know that but i don't want right i don't want to enter the entire name i only want to enter the last character right all i really want is one 
all I really want is six. So how do we get rid of that? We can use write to get rid of the first four characters. So we can do that. Let's go back in here. Let's get rid of this. Now you understand that. Get rid of that. Active cell value equals the active cell value in case whatever's there, we want to add to it. And write of what? The application dot caller comma one. I only want the rightmost character. And I want to put that in the active cell. So if this is the active cell, now I click one, two, three, four, See how it works? It's really, really great. So what if I want to clear that out and I want to enter one, zero, zero, one. Perfect, it worked good. One, zero, zero, two. You see how easy that was? One single macro, I'll change it for this and the decimal, but it worked great to add in items. That's just perfect. Don't worry about these subtotals. We're gonna add those in dynamically when we click print. All right, it's gonna be long training. I hope you're liking this. I know my trainings are long, but they are very, very comprehensive, and I wanna make sure that to give you all the tools to make your own amazing applications. Okay, so we understand that. Now what we need to do is write little macros for the clear and the dot. So let's write those right now. We've got the enter. See how easy that is with one very, very simple macro. Enter, let's do that enter decimal button. And we also want to enter the clear item button. So sub clear item button. This one's a little bit different with sheet one so if the active so i want to i want to double check to make sure that the active cell is e10 if active cell dot address right we're focused not add comment dot address is equal to e10 e10 then what do i want to do then i want to clear because it's a merge cell we must clear them all range dot range e10 through f10 because i need to clear remember we need to clear all both those dot value clear contents okay great so what if it's not else because that's then in this case we can just do active cell dot clear contents Okay, great. So what that's going to do is that's going to clear the contents based on whatever cell we've selected. And if it's a merge cell, if that's that E10, I want to make sure that we do that because it's this will create an error if we try to clear the contents of a single cell when it's a merge cell. So now let's see, we put in this and let's assign the macro. Right click. I'm going to scroll up so you can see it. Right click, assign the macro, clear item button. Okay, so what I want to do is when I run this, I want to clear whatever we have. So click. Let's click on this specific item, clear it. Okay, it works just perfect. Seven, eight, nine, clear. Great, one, zero, zero, four. It's gonna enter the item, perfect, clear. All right, great, so that's working, but I wanna enter the decimal. Maybe you wanna enter decimal. When we enter quantity, I also wanna be able to add to that clear. It also works for that too, but what if I wanna enter a decimal? I wanna make sure we do that. So let's enter a button for that. Obviously it's not, and let's create a macro just for that. Okay, so this is actually going to be a text field because we're gonna enter the decimal. And then what we wanna do, we wanna make sure if we're entering a decimal, it really only works in text fields. So let's add quantity goes to text. Okay, so next up, what do we want to do? In there, I wanna create a macro and we're going to call this enter decimal button. Sub, make this a little bit bigger so you can see what's going on. Enter decimal button and this is going to be pretty easy it's going to be the active cell dot value equals whatever's there already active cell dot value and the decimal and the decimal that's it pretty very simple very very simple and the sub very very simple so let's assign that macro now right click right click the individual remember this is a group shape so we need to right click and then I'm going to assign the macro to that and that's going to be enter decimal okay good so now when we enter the, let's say we want to enter the quantity 2.5 perfect okay and you see now it shows automatically grapes 2.5 we can clear that out 
and change it to 5.5 and it automatically changes here perfect so now we have that and we want to enter so we got we're getting closer to the end so thanks for your patience on this we just have a few more macros right i want to print and enter so we've got the add item good 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 all right so what i want to also do i want to print this receipt and then i want to save it so we can and i also want to add these payments so how can we do that the payments are really cool all we need to do is use the again application caller id and change it here the pay type so let's look at that how do we do that very very simple and that's just with one more macro sub enter payment cell and how is that sheet one dot range i7 that's our payment cell right i7 let's double check that dot select because i want to enter the payment right when user wants to enter payment Right? If they click payment, I want to, all we need to do is select this cell. That's all we need to do. So clicking this, is, let's just do that, enter payment dot select. So I'm gonna copy this. That's all I wanna do is enter the payment for that point so that we can get ready for the payment. Assign Mac, I'm just, sorry, it's off the screen. Right click assign Mac, or enter payment cell. All I want to do with this one is just select the payment cell. Then I wanna add in the payment buttons here. So that's pretty easy. How do we do that? Well, that's just the enter the pay type. Let's take a look at that. We're gonna also use application caller on that. We can do that because remember, we've named these specifically check. We've named these specifically, not the group, but the individual shapes, card, and so on and so forth. So let's go into that. So we can do that enter sub enter pay type. And in this case, sheet one dot range i6 i6 is the i6 dot value equals application dot caller pay type it's simple as that that's all we need to do so when we click now when we click hold down in the controls click assign macro and there we go enter pay type so now we have pay type cash card you see how that works because we know the name it automatically takes the name and enters them but when we're ready to enter a payment, now we can enter the payment just by clicking these buttons. 120 are clearing. You see, so we can enter the payment now easily. Put the check, and I also want to click the payments automatically. So we're ready to select the payment automatically. So let's do that. Once we do that, enter the pay type, I want to make sure that we're selecting the payment. So after they enter the pay type, I want to select the payment cell automatically. After they enter the after they enter the payment, I want to select the payment automatically so they can quickly enter the payment. So we do that with just one line of code. Sheet one dot range I7 select. I7 dot select. Okay. Enter payment cell. That way they can enter it with the buttons. Perfect. Great. So now they put on the payment, then they click the payment, enter the payment, and then just click 36 or whatever they want to pay. Great, so we need to change. What is that equal to the payment minus the total? Now I've got the change. And of course, I want to format that as currency, the payment, same thing. We're going to leave the payment there because watch what happens. If I enter the dollar sign here, if I enter that formatting accounting, it's going to not enter the decimal properly. See that? So we'll keep that as text. It's okay for now. We're going to keep that as text. Text. Okay, and then we can clear it out easily. And we can enter the proper 30, let's say they pay 30.89. Perfect, $2 is our change, we can right? Justify that. I like that the way it is. All right, great, so now we're ready to print the receipt. So let's save the work we've done and run a macro. And all I wanna do to print a receipt is basically determine the last row, add in the subtotal, so I'm gonna delete that. What I want to do then is I want to copy these subtotals, copy them, I take the payment amount, put it here, copy them, and then paste it right here. And then pay, actually going to paste it right here. And we're going to do that inside the code, paste it there. And I also just want to add an up. There's one more thing. Actually, I want to add a dotted line for the total. And I want to do that dynamically through conditional formatting. So let's do that. I'm going to highlight, um, actually I'll start here because it's not going to be, highlight all the cells here, all the potential cells, add in conditional formatting, conditional formatting, a new rule using a formula. And what is the formula? It's going to be based on this. So based on actually the first possible, which would be 
M10, M10, again, we're going to remove the dollar sign. And then equals, what's it going to equal? Sub total colon. So if it equals that, what do I want to do? I want to put a dotted line at the top. Format this dotted line at the top. Click OK. Perfect. Now I've got a nice subtotal and a total perfect. That's exactly the way I want. So as the subtotal changes, we're going to place this dynamically. So let's get ready to print it. Actually, we want to, before we want the date, always want that equals now. We want to put the date in there. That's good. We got the date now. We got everything. We got the ready to put it in. So let's save that again. And we'll go in back into the VBA and create a macro called print. Okay. So let's see sub print receipt. Okay, we're going to dimension, we need the last row of the street, dimension the last item row, that's very as long. We need to know the last item row so that we can place the total and all of that sheet. With sheet 1, first of all, we want to make sure it's i7 less than, we want to make sure that they've paid, right? We can't give them a receipt unless they've paid. What do I, how do I make sure? I want to make sure that i7 is greater than or equal to the total. Make sure that they have, because if they haven't paid yet, I don't want to print the receipt kind of nice okay so if dot range i7 is less than what then i5 then dot range i5 then message box please enter a payment at or above the total at or above the total all right, exit sub. Make sure that they've paid the bill before we can print a receipt, right? We can't have them getting away for free. Can't steal it. Dot range. What do we want? S6 value. We want to enter the payment amount. Again, because it's a text, because this is a text, and because I don't want this as a text, I want this actually as a currency. And this is, let's change all these to currencies. Although it's not going to matter because it's formatted, I'm only going to paste. So we want those as currencies. And so um, this is not a text because this is a text because it that text only works with decimals in this case. So we just want to copy this value and bring it over to here. So S6 is equal to, uh, to I7. I'm going to write that in right now. S6 dot value equals dot range I7 value. I7 value. And that what that's going to do is that's going to enter the payment amount. Enter the payment amount. Okay, great. Now I want to set the last item row, and that's going to be based on K. Last item row equal to dot range K, right? K is our item, 9999 dot value. That's a lot of nines. Dot end XL up dot row. That's going to be our last item row. That's what I want. If the last item row is less than 10, right? Less than 10 then exit the sub. That means there's no items, nothing to print, exit sub. Just want to put that in, that caveat in there. All right, great. So we're now ready to go. I want to clear B6. I want to clear the selected row. I don't want this, this highlighted row. I don't want that to print, right? Because it shouldn't print. It should just print as a normal receipt. The best way to do that is just to clear B6. So when we delete that, it's going to delete the conditional formatting. So we can do that. B6 should be cleared. Dot range B6 dot clear contents dot clear contents okay and that's going to clear that's going to clear selected receipt row okay good so that's kind of important we don't want that to show up on the receipt remember that footer copy remember that range okay let's set the range actually i want to set this as a range so that we can easily work with it so i'm going to highlight all the cells and just click here and put in footer range we also want to move this over and i also want to display this normally this is going to be hidden footer group we want to display and we want to display it based on where do i want to display it well let's take a look here where do we want to display it so what we're going to do is we're going to copy this over we're going to copy it over right about right here paste the values in there so it's going to be right here so where do i want to place this i want to place it about right mm, there i want to place it so if our last row is 16, where do I want to place it? I want to place it about seven rows, seven or eight rows down, I would think. About seven rows down from the last row. That's where I want to place this group here. Okay, so we can do that. So we know where we're going to place it now. Based on the last row, seven rows down. Okay, great. So we've got that. 
So let's do that. Let's write that code now. First of all, we want to, that range that we just created, we're going to copy that. That's this range right here. I want to copy that, the footer range. Let's do that right now. And since we've specified it as a range, we can do just that. So dot range, footer range, and then copy that dot copy where are we going to place it I'm going to place it in the last row plus one so we can do that dot range M that's the that's M and where and the last item row plus one right one below the last row I'm going to paste that in there dot paste special I just want to paste the values because we already have everything else formatted paste val paste special and then Excel paste values just to paste the values paste values only because everything else is already formatted which is fine we don't want to mess up and then application dot cut copy mode equals false that's going to get rid of the dancing ants okay so next up i'm ready with the footer group so with dot shapes what shape is called footer group remember that with the barcode footer group in our message we well, want to work with that dot left I want to place that somewhere dot left where do I want to place it equals sheet one we need to specify the sheet because we're focused on dot shape sheet one range K and the last item row plus seven remember we want to go seven down that's about what we want plus seven dot left I'm going to do the same thing for the top so we can copy this portion right here and then just go one down and do the same thing with top dot top equals she one and then dot top that's going to place it and um let's take a look then i want to make it visible dot visible equals ms true so we got to make it visible good 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 all right so next up what are now we're ready to, now we're ready to print it we want to set the print area because the print area is going to be dynamic so i want to start it out in k1 and go all the way down to at least here right or maybe here right one row below but how do we know the last row well we know the last row is 16 but i want to go all the way down and i want to add in maybe 10 or 11 rows probably 10 or 11 rows here so we can do it. let's say 11 rows so 11 rows i'm going to set the print range so it's going to start out in k1 it's going to go all the way down to the last item plus 11 to n so let's set that print range right now so we can do that dot page setup right we're setting up the page dot print area what is the print area is going to equal to k1 we know that's our starting range k1 through n and in what and the last item row plus 11 that's going to be enough next up we're ready to print out dot print print out what do we want to print out I want to print out from to that's important noted copies you can keep that as default preview active printer let's set that to true the active printer print to file no collate no print to file name no ignore print areas and let's put that as false okay that's going to print it out and then I want to get ready for the next order once we print it out I want to select e10 I just want to get it ready for the next order but I also want to click the next so let's select e10 just to make sure dot range e10 dot select okay great so we've got e10 that looks about right let's run that and let's assign it to the button and see if we have any code save it always want to save after writing code let's assign that that's the print here so we're going to click on the group here scroll up so you can see it right click assign macro and then print receipt okay let's take a look my default printer let's see if we have any issues print looks like it's printing out and it's going to print to my snagit editor wow that looks really good let's take a look at that zoom out that looks good that's the way I've, it looks like this one. i want to move it over a little bit but i think everything looks just the way i wanted to see it we need to do some formatting on here that doesn't look quite right so let's format these i want to make sure everything's formatted correctly formatting make sure we hit the currency so everything's formatted the same that looks good our subtotal looks good our dotted line we have very nice all right great it looks like we're going doing good making a lot of progress one more macro to write what i want to do is i want to take all this information and i want to save it to the sales i want to save it here so we have a save it so we can use reports and run our sales reports because i want to save all that information so let's write that macro right now everything looks 
very good we're making good progress so the last macro would be to save it and clear it so this button would be next i want to clear all save it to the database and then clear it all and get ready for the next item so let's see how do we do that we're going to start writing some macros let's go down here we're going to keep everything on the same module this time sub we'll call it save and clear thanks for sticking with me on this extremely long training I want to give you tons and tons of value. If you like these workbooks, I love your support. Whether you're joining the courses or purchasing workbooks, I really, really appreciate it. That keeps these trainings free each and every week. Last item row, and also the first database row. Where am I going to put that in the first database row? As long as you need to know that, and also the total rows. Total rows as long. We need to know how many total rows. So that's very, very important okay so now that we got the total rows let's get the last item row with sheet one we're focused on sheet one primarily the last item row remember is k we know that already so we, we already did that up here why don't we just copy that here it's going to be the same thing we need to know the last item and then we can paste it right down here no difference on that last item row same variable same everything total rows is going to be equal to the last item row minus nine our row starts in 10 so we're going to subtract nine total items i want to know the total items that's very important so i want to know how many items to add to this database so we're going to start the last one in this case its total is seven so all we need to do is the last item row 16 minus nine is going to get us seven so we need to know the total items to add to our database all right so we have that so we've got the total items next up i want to know the first available database row i want to know what's the first row that we're going to add to here in this case it's three but i need to know the first available row so we can we don't want to copy over any other information so we're going to get our first database row is going to be equal two and it's going to be sheet three sheet three is our sales sheet three dot range a and then we'll just use a large number nine 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 dot end excel up dot row nice okay so we have our plus one our last of our last row of data plus one is going to be our first available row first available row okay great so we have our first available database row now we're getting ready to copy over the information so sheet three starting in a right what do i want to put in a let's add our, our invoice before we add our items i want to add our invoice i want to add in our receipt number our date and our cashier i want to add all of that information in receipt number date and cashier that's going to come from here receipt number date and cashier so it's going to come from m5 m6 and m7 so we can add that in. i want to add it in for every single row every single row of our receipt so if there's seven rows here i want to add it in all seven here all seven here and all seven here it's gonna be the same information receipt date so we can do that with just a few lines of code sheet three dot range what is the range it's going to start out in a of course and the first and the first database row the one that we just defined db same thing okay all the way and all the way through a and what colon actually colon a and the first database row plus the total rows and the first database row plus the total rows we also have to subtract one total rows minus one because we don't can't count the existing row okay total rows minus one and that is going to be our setup so we can set that up dot value equals what is it equal it equals dot range and it's going to be our dot range l5 that's our receipt number l5 let's take a look at that and make sure we have our l our receipt numbers what would i want to add in there m5 m5 is where our receipts located so i want to put that in there m5 m6 m7 so i want to make sure we put all that information in okay so m5 is where we want to put that that's our receipt number and we can copy and paste this and we're just going to add in the rest of course we're going to be column b column c receipt number column b what's b b is going to of course be our date so we want to add that in b is going to be m6 m6 is our date order date and then our cashier of course cashier is going to go into c 
So put C for our cashier, and our, our cashier comes from M7. Now let's just double check that. So we know everything is correct. Our receipt number is M5, our date is M6, and our cashier is M7. Great. Now that we have all of that in there, we are ready to add in all of our items here. So we can do that with just a little bit of code. So let's do that now. So in this case, it's going to start out in D. D is going to be the first, right? D, D is going to take on our item and all the way to G is going to be a total. So it's D through G. We can just copy that straight out. D through G is going to be equal to what? Equal to dot range K10, starting at K. K10 is our first. K10 through N and the last item row and the last item row dot value and that's going to be all item detail all right let's double check that k through n is going to be going to be equal k through n all that information all the way to the from the from starting from k10 all the way to the last row taking all that information and bring it right into here all right, good. So we've got that covered. Let's take a look. Let's finish up our, our thing and get ready for the next order so we can do that. So bring it down, add a few lines here, and what is next in our code. Next up, what I want to do is I want to make sure that we're going to hide our footer group. We don't need our, our footer group anymore. That's the receipt number. We can hide that. No need to do that. Dot shapes, footer group. When we're getting ready for the next order, dot visible equals MSO false right let's hide footer group shape don't need that anymore and then also I want to delete the item picture right? if there's an item picture here here I want to delete that we don't need to show that anymore we need to clear the contents delete the picture but if there's no picture it could create an error so let's wrap that on air zoom next dot shapes item pick dot delete and then on air Okay, so now we've got the picture and now I want to clear the contents. I want to clear all of you know the receipt. We want to clear that starting at K and going all the way down. Just clear everything out. We can delete everything, getting it ready for the next order. So dot range K10 through N. Remember, because we're adding in the formulas dynamically through VBA, we can delete them anyways. 999. Okay dot clear contents not clear because that would clear the formats just clear contents and then what I want to do is I want to calculate it dot calculate it and what do I want to do to calculate it? I want to make sure that new receipt number gets generated our new receipt number is based on a few things it's based on the, the maximum of the receipt numbers and it's based on this formula right here so I want to make sure the next receipt number gets calculated once it's calculated I want to put the next receipt number right here into M5 so we can do that with the following lines of code dot range M5 dot value equals dot range B7, B7. And that is going to be our new receipt number. New receipt or next receipt number. Next receipt number. Getting ready for the next. All right, now I want to clear out several fields. What do I want to clear out? I want to clear out uh, basically certain fields for the previous or dot range. I want to clear out B6. That's going to be our, our item row in case that has a value. E3 through F3 through F3. What is that? Well, that I want to make sure that our item number, I want to clear this out. And I want to clear out our item name. And I want to clear out that. It's getting ready for the next. So E3 through F3. F6, quantity, price. I want to make sure F8 is cleared out. And I want to clear out I7. I7. So basically, I want to clear out all this information, the payment type, uh, the payment amount, payment type, I guess we can keep I6 there, in case it's the same payment type, in case they're always using cash or something. All right, so we cleared that out. So now we cleared everything out. Let's finish up that line of code, dot I7, dot clear contents, clear item fields. Okay, so I want to select E10, dot range, E10, getting it ready for the next E10 dot select. That's the order. 
nice okay so let's clear that up check it out for any errors save before we actually run this code that's always a good idea save it and assign this macro it's called save and clear so we can copy this and then enter that right here i'm gonna this is the button i want to assign it to right click actually right click the entire group assign the macro sorry it's off the screen save and clear and click ok now that we've printed it all right let's bring this up here and click next and see what happens variable not defined total rows we need to make sure that this is total rows okay all right that worked good now we've cleared it out perfect and we're ready this we want to add an if error we don't want to have this in there okay if error wrap that in if error comma double quotes because I don't want to show it like an A all right that looks good now let's now after it's been selected and let's take a look at our sales here increase the date that looks good the quantity everything got saved so our next one should be 1001 1001 is the right one that's exactly the way we want it perfect so select in here add another one you can use the buttons or of course we can also type in one perfect 1007 nice we're adding these in 1002 perfect or we can type it in 1002 good and we can also select something change the quantity nice change the price and of course we can change the price also with our you can change the price any which way we want set a payment and set a payment amount and then we can set it to twenty dollars okay good and we've got that and now we can print our receipt print it adding the subtotal perfect it prints it out nicely good and now we can click next awesome great now we've created a brand new point of sale it's a really really great program i'm glad i got to show this to you thanks for sticking with me on this extra long training thank you so much of course if you do like this video make sure you subscribe and i can't wait and we will see you next week thanks so much have a great week